Hello guys! Welcome back from another video live with Dearly! Guys, today is a very very happy day because I have my Troy, Troy built Super Bronco brand new tiller. Yes guys, um, we're, uh, this is the very first time that Kevin and I we're gonna use a tiller because from the past years guys we're just doing a shovel and all that stuff but this year guys we wanna go high uh level up so we bought brand new troy built uh troy built super bronco this is the the same the same brand of our uh four wheeler oh no the the lawn mower yeah, it's the same brand and then our lawnmower, we have we have that lawnmower for five years, no problem at all. So why not buy a, the same brand? So but before we're gonna before I'm gonna show you how I use it, I have a special guest that is gonna explain it to you how this this thing work. Let's all welcome Kevin. <laughs> hey everybody. I feel very blessed to be a special <laughs> guest here on Life with Durley. So today what I'm going to do is explain to you the simple uh, functionings of this Troy built Super Bronco 208cc roto tiller. Yep, 208cc. Uh, this video is greatly needed because there's one piece of information I'm going to share with you about this roto tiller that was almost impossible to find through Google. It's not on Troy Built's website and nobody who's done any videos on this particular machine has shown this very well. So you're gonna to wanna to see this in order to be able to, to use your tiller, okay? I'll tell you when we get to that point. It has to do with the wheels, okay? And the self-propeller mechanism of the Troy Built tiller, here at least for the Super Bronco. First things first, very simple. I if you can zoom in on this. This is where the gasoline goes. It's kind of uh, self-explanatory, but we want to show you anyway. We like how they have a metal chain on here so that you don't lose the cap. And the metal, of course, is better than plastic because it won't corrode. Oil goes here. Now, our particular machine did not come with any oil in it, but it did come with a pouch of oil in the bag with the owner's manual. So we're able to get that in there. It just takes four-stroke oil. Okay, and now, hun, if you'll come around to the front. Uh, some of these... Tillers have electric starts, ours doesn't. Ours has a traditional pull start. So the only things you need to be aware of are the, the idle right here. Down here it's on stop and then you've got slow and then of course you've got fast. And honey, are you showing them the pictures in there? Yep, see rabbits for fast, toidles for slow and then stop. And then this is the choke. And if you can show them down in there, honey, the one that's at the slanted, the slanted image means choke on. This means choke off. Okay, and then of course there's just the pull string. And now there's no primer on this model. So you've got to make sure that your, your uh, fuel is full. You've got fuel in it. And then you simply put, I'm not gonna do it this time because I've already had this engine started and the engine's warm. But if, if the engine's not warm, you put the choke all the way on, turn the choke all the way on um, and Pull this out slowly so that it gets tension, let it go back in slowly, then give it a crank. And this was, this we just picked this up yesterday, brand new. Just put the fuel in it only minutes ago. And it started up on the first pull and I was able to put the choke into the middle position. I let it run for maybe 20 seconds to warm the engine. Then I turned the choke off entirely and the engine is running great. We've had no problems with it. Uh, now, we're not to that special part yet that, that this makes this video really required material for the internet because so many people will not be able to figure out how to use this Troy Built Tiller until we show you this. Again, it has to do with wheel engagement. Before we get to that, we're gonna bring you around the back and show you how the tine adjuster works. This is pretty simple. There's even a picture here to show you. When the tine adjuster is all the way up like this, believe it or not, that's when it's in the deepest depth. And then to make for a more shallow tilling, you push this down, cause see what that actually does is this props this mechanism up here in the back up so you don't dig as deeply. And if you're transporting your tiller, pushing it to your garage or your building, wherever you're storing it or to your garden back and forth, you want it to have it in this position so you're not dragging your tines on the ground, okay? Now, 
here comes that special part I was going to tell you about. When most people buy their tillers, uh, or if they, they've had them in the garage or the out shed building for a year or two, they've forgotten this part. This has to do with rolling the tiller to the garden spot. They can't get it to roll because if you'll see here, the wheels are locked. See that? I'm using my weight, my body weight. Make sure you're showing me. I'm using my body weight and my strength, and it's just not going to move because the wheels are locked. This is not the position the wheels were in when we bought the product. We bought the product with the wheels in the free wheel position. Okay, so when I started the engine, which I'll do for you here in a minute, and when I engaged the tines and I tried to till, uh, it wouldn't self-propel because the wheels were in free wheel mode. And if I pushed the tines down into the soil, the thing wanted to jump out of the garden and go over the fence. Very dangerous, it's a good way to get hurt. I had to figure out how to actually lock the wheels into self-propeller mode. And my God, there's not a single video on YouTube showing that until now, until this video on, on my beautiful bride, Dearly, AKA Giggly Girls channel, Life with Dearly. So you got to share this on your Facebook page and every other avenue of social media you've got access to. Otherwise, people who own this Troy Built Tiller, it's not even on the Tro Troy Built website. I look there as well. I'd write them a letter, but I, that's just not worth my time. I'm going to show you how to do it here. Honey, come down here and give them a close up on this wheel right here. It's this simple, guys, and this is not explained. It's not in the owner's manual. I read this, and it was very poorly written. Very poorly written. <laughs> I was making sure one going to hit me in the head. We're going to use that to start our fire tonight. Okay, look, it's this simple. Here's a cotter pin in this wheel. To change the wheel system from the free wheel position to the self-propelled wheel lock position, and you've got to do this on both sides, you simply open this cut, flip this, this cotter pin back like this, and you pull out the cotter pin. Now, what I would do here if I wanted to go freewheeling is I would push the tire in, and then there's another hole in there. Where is it? Oh, there it is. You got to line the holes up, of course. Oh, actually, there is no hole. You simply put the cotter pin back in place. Now, honey, let's go around here to the other side and show them. Oh, wow. Yeah, come around to the other side. Same thing. Okay, so you'll want to remember this for when you you store your, your uh, tiller again. Take the cotter pin out, push the wheel back, put the cotter pin back in. Okay, and now... Show me in the whole machine, hon. You got us? Mm -hmm. Look at this. Now I can move the machine. See that? I can roll it. I can freewheel it. I can push it back down into our garage and store it. When I was Googling this, and this is another reason I'm pointing this out, hundreds of people were asking the question on the internet, I can't move my tiller. How do I get it out of my garage? Well, that's how. You just got to change those cotter pins. Okay? But then, let's show them again. Now, here's the deal. If I were to start this thing, and I'm not going to show you this because this is an unsafe action and YouTube, for good reasons, has very good policies against showing unsafe actions. If I were to start the engine and get the tines going, they would dig down into the dirt, but the thing wouldn't move and I'd have to push it, which is nearly impossible. And if I threw on the throttle, this thing would jump out over the fence. And if I were not a relatively strong adult male, it could really hurt me. Okay, and it could still, despite being a relatively strong, adult, healthy male. So, once you've got your tiller in your location where you want to safely till, you need to put the wheel system back into the self-propelled. Uh, oh, watch out for that. Make sure you flip this thing out instead of pulling that cotter pin straight out because that'll hit you on the finger and that hurts a little bit. That smarts just a bit, matey. <laughs> so, what we do then is we pull the, take the cotter pin out, pull the wheel system back out. There, might help. Oh yeah, look at that. If I just turn it up on its edge a little bit and then I line the hole up there, set it back down. Always be careful. You don't want to get hurt doing this stuff. Put the cotter pin back in. Again, watch that thing flipping around on you. It can hurt. Hold on, hang on. I'm trying to get my face down here. There. 
Sorry to block your view, guys, but I had to get my face in there to see the hole. There. There was. Again, here it seems like the secret. And guys, this is this is only the second time I've adjusted these wheels. The first time when I was figuring out and the second time now that I'm showing you, but it seems like the key is tipping it up a little bit to where you get a little bit of clearance on the ground to be able to do that. So well, let's go do the other one. Okay, again, it was it's in free, free wheel here. You got it set up in your garden where you want to use it. Take the cotter pin out, okay? Then lift a little. Lift it up just a little bit. Line up that hole like that. Well, keep it lined up. Put your cotter pin back in. Oops. Careful with this sucker. Thing is, once you get it in, it's not coming out. All right, there we go. It's back in. And now it's locked. It's back in the self-propelled locked motion. The wheels are locked. That's how you lock and unlock the wheels. Again, I'm amazed it wasn't on the Troy Built website. Only one video I found on YouTube, and the guy, when he was showing it, the wind was blowing so hard you couldn't hear what he was saying. So we appreciate the wind dying down today. Now, with all this, we're ready to go. We're fueled up. I've showed you how to start it, showed you how to adjust the time position. We've got the wheels in self-propeller motion, so now we're going to start it. So, hun, come over here, and let's just show them how easy it is to start. Okay. Again, I'm not going to choke it because we've had it started, and the, the engine should still be warm. So I'm just gonna put it on fast mode. Now come up here, show them this. Here's your start and your stop button. It's on stop. Make sure that's on, on, on the run position. Otherwise it won't start. Now back up there, hon. Show them how to start this. Oh, wow. One more. One more. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That was a good job, honey. Here again. You can adjust the idle. set at the most shallow level i'm going to set the tines deeper now and show you how well it does deeply and by the way this is a reverse mechanism it's recommended that you do not till in reverse because it's not as safe but this does allow you to back up see that so when i back up i want to have to till the, the tines up out of the ground for safety purposes but this allows me to back the tiller up without having to use my strength set the times for a deeper mode and I'll watch, show you how simple this is also. Same thing. that simple that's all there is to it 
You think you can do it, honey? Yeah, I want to do it. You want to do it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now let's see. I'm if, excited. Just trade me positions here. I'll take the phone. Don't even stop recording. Okay. And then let's just see. Now I'm going to move this stick. Guys, I do want to point out a couple things. Make sure your tilling area is clear of debris, okay? Um, we've had a we've got a bunch of oak leaves down here. You want to sweep this out of the way because basically anything you have out here can get caught up in those tines. Yeah, so, so, honey, this is clear enough. You yeah, can do the pen. Yep. Yeah, turn it there. You got that one on? Yeah. Okay. And then you pull this right. Yep. Oh, not. Yeah, <laughs> wait, yeah, you got to pull it hard. Oh, no, no, wait, wait. <laughs> there you go. Good job, honey. Stop. Okay, yeah, you don't want to get in those leaves. No. no. Um, kid, you want to just, however you want to do it. You want to turn it around. Is that hard? Wow, that is very awesome. You don't need it, it's very like, um, like it looks like it's so heavy, uh -huh. but when as soon as you start, um, tilling it, uh -huh. it doesn't feel like heavy. You just like push it and then you just let the machine, yeah, it's just self propelling. It yeah. propels itself, huh? You don't yeah. even have to push it, yeah. The, I know. the tires just pull you right along, huh? Yeah, this is very awesome. I love this. Okay, guys, I think that's it. There's, there's anything that you want to show more? No, it, it, it's a pretty simple to use machine. Yeah. Once you figure it again, the biggest thing, the biggest thing most of you will take away from this video is, is figuring out how to put those wheels into lock mode or free wheel mode. For yeah. some reason, there's no information about that on the internet until now. <laughs> Good job, honey. Two thumbs up, honey. Uh -huh. Okay, guys, I think I'm going to end this video now so that I can, re because I need to remove the leaves. Because guess what, the, the original plan is I'm gonna put lots of leaves here and then put the weather sto uh, weed stopper. But you know, uh, I always change plan guys. So I'm gonna remove all these leaves first before I'm gonna tilt all the my whole garden. But before I can do that, I need to end this with you now. I hope you learned something about this Troy Belt Super Bronco Tiller. And I hope guys you enjoyed this video. And thank you, thank you guys so much for watching. And I hope I'll see you next time for more. Bye-bye.